Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on building a multiplayer card game using Phaser 3, Express, and Socket.io. In this video, we're going to start working on our cards, which is great because this is a card game. We've done basically nothing towards that. So um, where we're going to start is by creating, and yep, you guessed it, uh, more helpers in the helpers folder. I'm going to create a new folder and just call it cards. And in this cards folder, we're going to create uh, a few different things. First, we're just going to create a, a base card.js uh, class. Uh, while we're at it, we'll create um, one for each of the other types of uh, cards that we have. Uh, at least in my game, uh, Entromancy Hacker Battles, the um, sprites that we're using from them for the cards, uh, you can use whatever you like and name them whatever you like, um, whether you're using the cards that I've provided in the GitHub re repository for this video or your own sprites, whatever you like is fine. Uh, so we'll need a boolean.js and we'll need a ping.js. This is the name of the two cards we're using for my game. And we'll also need a cardback.js to, to simulate the, the, the backs of these cards. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to create one card class and then have each of the other cards derived from that class. So once you have this set up, it should be pretty plug and play to just add a new card. And in our card class, we're just going to say export default class card and we'll pass in a scene to the constructor and we're going to write a render function similar to what we did for our drop zone. We'll say this.render equals x coordinate, y coordinate, and a type. And we'll say let's sprite, just an empty variable there. If the type that is passed into this is equal to player card, then the sprite will be this dot player card sprite. Otherwise, the sprite should be this dot opponent card sprite. This is how we're going to start building in the logic for whether the card should be rendered on screen as player cards or as opponent cards. We'll see this in action like who knows when, <laughs> like in a couple of videos. Unfortunately, there's so much we need to do to just to build the uh, the architecture for this game, but uh, it will make sense. I do, pr I do promise that. Then below this code block, we're going to say, uh, well, within the render block, we're going to say, let card equal scene.add.image, which uh, is how you add a sprite into a phaser scene. And we're going to use the x, y coordinates that are passed into this um, and, and whatever sprite has been chosen. We're going to set the scale just because the scale of my cards, I'm, I'm making them a bit smaller and I'm saying set the scale to 0 0.25, 0 0.25. If you're doing something custom for your game, you, you won't need to do this. Dot set interactive dot set data. And setting data is something that you can um, you can add, basically add data to a, a, any game object in Phaser. And we're going to use that to our advantage. And we're going to say name, and it's going to be whatever is the name of this current object that we're working with. This dot name type is either player card or opponent card, and sprite is sprite. So we're going to use this uh, <clears throat> this information that's being passed in to help us construct this card. If the type is equal to player card, then scene.input.setDraggable 
the card. And return card at the end of the render function. The, so <clears throat> to make something draggable in phaser, you first have to send it interactive. And then you want to use the scenes input system to make it draggable. And we only want that to happen for our player cards because if opponent cards render on the screen, we don't want people to be able to, um, a player to be able to move around the opponent cards in this particular scenario. Maybe in your game, anyone can move cards around or tokens or whatever. So, so you'll have to work that out yourself. Okay, so that's our base class. <clears throat> Let's put it to work in the um, Boolean card, which is, which is gonna be derived from that. We're gonna say import card from slash card.js. And then export default class Boolean extends card constructor will need scene to be passed into it and super I means do do um, the same thing as the as what it inherits from and this dot name equals boolean this dot player card sprite equals cyan boolean and this dot opponent card sprite equals magenta, oops, magenta boolean. Very good. So essentially what happens here is we have this base class card that um, has certain logic based on what the name of the card is and um, uh, what type uh, and, and, and sprite and so on and so forth. And so the if <clears throat> the Boolean card is being uh, generated or rendered and it is supposed to use a player card sprite, it will use the cyan version. If it's an opponent card, it will use the magenta version or the, the blue and the, the pink version. Okay. Then I'm just going to copy this. We're going to head to our uh, ping.js file. We're going to do the same thing here. And we're going to call this ping. We're just going to replace these things with ping. You could probably find and replace if you like as well. Okay. And then lastly, for our card back, we're going to do uh, pretty much the same thing. Say card back extends card, and the name is going to be card back and cyan card back and magenta card back. Great. Cool. So, those are going to be the, the basic cards. If you had, let's say, <clears throat> you're making like a Magic the Gathering type game or whatever. You could, for example, have specific functionality within this card in terms of what a card, um, I don't know, let's say um, a spell should do, uh, well, a creature card should do versus a um, uh, a sorcery card. Um, and th that they would have specific um, uh functions or methods or whatever that exist in this card. And then each of your cards that were sorcery cards, they could derive from them. Um, and you would just be able to, to have this, the, the initial uh, card class have um, all the basics and then uh, everything else could inherit from that and then be specific towards that. But we're just keeping it pretty basic here. Okay, so the next thing we wanna mess with is the deck handler here. And, um, what our uh, deck handler is going to do for us is uh, to um, uh, be able to uh, render cards on screen um, in uh, a more sequential fashion so we don't have to do it um, uh, the same way every time. We don't have to, um, what am I trying to say? We don't have to do it individually every time. And whatever you need to do uh, like however you manip manipulate the decks in your game, you could ha have happen in this deck handling in, in um, deck handler uh, um, uh, class. We're just going to be using it to just deal cards. But you know, if you wanted to clean up cards or 
shuffle them in a certain way or whatever. That could all live here. So I'm going to import card back from the directory of cards and then card back. I'm going to import boolean from slash cards slash boolean. And I'm going to import ping from slash cards slash ping. Okay, so in the constructor, I'm going to need to pass in the scene. And then this dot deal card equals x y name type. And let cards equals card back is a new card back scene. Boolean is a new Boolean. And pass in the scene as well. Just so need a comma here. And ping is a new ping scene. Let new card equals cards and then use whatever name uh, we passed into this um, to, to determine which of this which of these classes we want to um, create an instance of. And then return new card dot render x y type. Okay. So this is a little bit abstracted, but but I, I think you'll you'll be able to get it. It's uh, essentially the deck handler. If we want to deal a card, we we're pass wherever we're we're calling this function, we're passing in um, the x and y coordinates, which is used by the card uh, class to determine where to to where it should be rendered. Um, and then a name and a type. The type is we're just passing it along to see if it's a player card or an uh, opponent card. And then the name, what we do is we use the name to, uh, to determine which of these um, uh, classes we should create an instance of. Uh, is it a card back, boolean, or ping? And then we return that, and, uh, we return the rendering of that uh, to the scene. So that's, that's basically how that's going to work. Now, good news and bad news. Is that the um, the the way that we're going to manage this is we're going to uh, uh, we're going to put the pieces together with our interactive handler um, and I really should have named that interactivity handler but what can you do um, we're going to use the interactive handler and the socket handler to connect, communicate with the server um, to say when it's time for uh, someone to um, uh, uh, render a card. So, I mean, that's cool. It just means that when I hit deal cards, stuff should happen on the screen. Now, this is a bit complicated uh, in terms of in practice uh, when you're building a multiplayer game. And like I said in a previous video, if you're feeling like impatient or frustrated, please just watch the original version of this of this series, uh, this video, or, you know, um, prior videos about uh, more like entry-level JavaScript stuff because what um, we need to do here is rather than just saying deal cards here on the client side and then cards appear, the deal cards uh, button or text, when I click on it, it's going to send a message to the server that says, hey server, I want you to deal me some cards. And then the server is then going to send back up the chain the cards that should be um, that should be rendered so that like I'm not just able to create cards on my like hack into this client and create cards and then like just say that those are my cards. I want the server to be the the source of truth for where those cards come from and to make that actually work is going to take a little bit more work on our, on our part. So I'm, I'm sorry to make you keep waiting for for um, some like uh, real interesting action on screen here but I promise that we'll get to it um, pretty soon. So that'll do it for this video about building cards and we'll return in the next video and start working on our interactivity. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more. You can also follow me on Twitter and uh, please do check out my books and games at nightpathpub.com.
We'll see you soon.